Cody Lee. I'm a tech specialist up in Western North Dakota, and I'm out here today in a Levisol DFC trial. Before I get started with this though, I'd like to just kind of recap and walk through what our Levisol chelate is all bringing to the table. So, as most of you are already familiar, the Levisol chelate, when in the soil, binds with micronutrients, right? So, when it binds with those micronutrients, it makes it more available to the plant. So, how does this play a role with our phosphorus market? Well, in the soil, micronutrients and phosphorus like to bind and combine and form salt complexes. As we all know, plants drink their food, right? They don't chew. So when something forms a salt complex and precipitates out a solution, it becomes unavailable to the plant. So essentially, we are increasing the micronutrient availability and ensuring we're not getting our phosphorus tied up. So how does this look from more of a kind of practicality standpoint? especially when we're looking at our diverse portfolio of growers. So say you have kind of a less aggressive uh, fertility program kind of guy. Well, to me, those are the guys where you really need to get the most out of your maps, staps, and meses, right? So that chelate is gonna help prevent any tie up uh, with that phosphorus and help push those yields that way. On the flip side, some of our more aggressive guys uh, with more of the aggressive fertility program that are applying plenty of P, N, and K um, well, they're really not going to see those three as their limiting factor, and that's kind of where you see micronutrients kind of have more of a play, right? If N, P, and K aren't your limiting factor, your micronutrients start to have more and more of an effect, and they really become a key factor when trying to push those yields. So that's just kind of a couple different scenarios where uh, kind of our Levisol program has, our Levisol chelate has kind of a fit in a few different areas. So. Now I want to talk about a little bit more about this trial specifically. So we're out here in the Minot, North Dakota area where the beginning of this spring was super dry. So across all of our nutrient uh, trials out here, especially right away early on in the season, we didn't really see any huge visual di or any visual differences at all. And that is to be expected because moisture was our limiting factor, right? Well, towards the beginning of July and kind of towards the end of July here, we started to get more and more precipitation and now we're just finally towards the end of July starting to tease out a little bit of these treatment differences. Now you really can't see a huge uh, visual difference between what the Levisol chelate is bringing to the table right now um, but I would expect later on uh, when we're doing our yield management we're we'll starting to tease out a little bit more of the differences um, especially when those micronutrients come into play.